Hello again. So today I have decided to challenge myself and spend a full day outdoors alone, which may not sound like anything special to most people, but it is a very challenging thing for me to do, okay? <laughs> Obviously, I only have four videos, but previously, all my old vlogs have been filmed with the help of my semi-willing friends. I, I can't rely on other people forever, so I am going to be giving myself this special challenge. Ooh. I don't know if you guys are grasping my vision for today, but it's supposed to be K from Overbleed meets Bella Swan. I always tell myself that I'm gonna commit and do something that's more authentically Y2K, but I feel like every time I end up doing something really, really safe. I even bought one of these like little casket hats because I thought, oh, this is, this is gonna work. I thought I was gonna look like the coolest Tremie Sweet Victorian England has ever seen. However, yeah. Wait. I decided to embrace the Gen 6 Pokemon trainer vibe and also grab my my satchel bag that I bought a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I pack my bag, I pretend I'm in one of those magazine interviews and I have to pick my favorite quirky things that I can't live without. My first item, my little Cineral headphones. It had a charm, but it broke off. So sad. I always bring my headphones because one of my biggest fears when leaving the house is that people ask me for directions. I am very lost, but Maybe I have a high trust face because tourists and old ladies on the train constantly badger me with questions about directions. Please wish me luck. Does anyone else ever romanticize public transport by telling yourself that you're living in a cybercore future? I do that a lot, but it still doesn't help when you're stuck with a horde of screaming children on a commuter train in this future. Today, the first stop that I'm heading to on my solo adventure is this really cool indie manga store my friend told me about while filming my Fruitiger Arrow vlog. I saw online that they opened at 1, so I rushed there at noon in hopes that no one else would be there. <laughs> It's in this initially shady looking old building, so I got lost before I found it, but I instantly fell in love with the endearingly dusty sort of vibe. There's something very comforting to me about being cozy small spaces, so the fact that this place is essentially made up of three hallways was really great. I actually went there to look and see if they had any vintage magazines with 2000s AMA front covers, and even after looking on all of their shelves, I had no luck. I did find a very interesting magazine called Gothic Lolita Bible. The art and colors instantly caught my eye, and I felt as if it was divine intervention calling me to it, even if I'm clearly not a goth lolly. I'm realizing now that it might be kind of inconsiderate to show the magazines without actually opening them for you to read, so I decided to turn the camera back on. I still can't get over how nice the front cover is. The artist did a really good job, don't you think? I can feel her staring into my soul. Even the back cover is so atmospheric. Immediately after opening, I'm already hit with a sense of nostalgia for a subculture I never have or will interact with. It even comes with these amazing stickers with very fashionable teddy bears. I'll miss print media when it's gone someday. Whenever I flip through a magazine, it always amazes me how much work was put into each page to make it distinct from every other spread. And somehow magazines do this for, like, what? Every week? Every month? It's crazy. It's like the essence of 2000's Akihabara is osmosed through the paper into me. Interestingly, it also came with this giant sheet. At first I thought it was a map, but I didn't bother reading it through. Ah, uh, there were enough pretty pictures. Next up is Pop Teen. I forgot to show myself buying this earlier, but I couldn't resist picking this up since it was so cheap. Obviously I am not in the right demographic for this, but unfortunately there probably aren't many other boys interested enough in learning about Gyaruo fashion to justify stocking magazines about it. What a shame. It's um, a bit pedestrian compared to the gothic Lolita Bible, obviously but the page layouts are still really cool. This page is my favorite. It's so 2010s line stickers for millennials core, right? I unironically really love this for some reason. There seems to be a resurgence in the pseudo-futuristic 90s toy store vibe these days. 
I'm not complaining. It reminds me so much of those plug and be playlists you see on YouTube. I've been obsessed with Eyelet's new song Magnetic ever since their highlight reel because it had so many pastel colors and this reminds me so much of that. I actually wanted to do a plug and be themed vlog for this week but I didn't know how to pull off the concept in a vlog form. I was so tempted to buy literally everything I saw today but it feels like whenever I go out to film I go broke so I stayed my hand. I walked past the Vivian Westwood cafe and then almost immediately found the most amazing figures of Nana and Hashi from well, Nana. They were so expensive and people were looking at me weird for filming anime girl figures so I didn't stay long. I wish I could just live in these toy stores that only stock figures. My favorite thing today probably has to be these salary man bunnies. So adorable. So sad. They're mystery boxes though so I didn't want to get a new gacha obsession. I already have enough of a problem already. Can you blame me though? The machines are so pretty. Something that I did consider buying though was these posture cushions since I am almost exclusively sat at a 45 degree angle every day. I got my hopes up since I saw Hello Kitty, but they didn't seem to have any Simroll music boxes at the store. I just don't vibe with her, okay? It's, it's nothing personal. There were lots of reflective surfaces to distract me, but I still have no idea how to take cool photos. I would like to extend an apology to any of my treasured viewers who have asked me to post on Instagram. It was like 2.30 at this point, so I just bit the bullet and decided to have a meal by myself. Thankfully, Ichiron exists so that useless people like me can eat in privacy. My favorite human innovation has got to be QR code ordering. Does this really warrant having multiple page tabs? Even the taps for water are automated. This is always a relief for those of us afraid of waiters. As always, the ramen looks and tastes consistently good. The staff kindly always give us a deep bow when they serve the ramen, but I wasn't recording at the time, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Sometimes I like to bring my 3DS out to project the image that I'm quirky and mysterious but I'm realizing that that doesn't work when there's also a tripod in front of me. There just had to be a crowd of 10 tours pouring in behind me too. I'm cursed, aren't I? Even though I'm supposed to be on a diet, I ordered a second serving of ramen just to show you guys how being served works here. Aren't I thoughtful? But I think they only bow when it's the first order here, or maybe the waiter saw my camcorder. If so, then I feel bad. Uh, it's so hard to add ramen to the bowl when you're trying to film with your other hand. My judgment might have been wrong here, but I brought my own tissue so it's all good my next quest will be to shop for clothes by myself they always have so many anime shirts here but none of the shows that i actually watched i always find the mannequin outfits here so funny because they look like they would do a naruto sprint in a school hallway maybe i should wear this if i ever do a loser core part two vlog i'm sadly a boring adult now so i only went to buy socks the sign said that you get a discount if you buy three pairs so i did but didn't register at the self-checkout and i was truly nervous to ask for help so I paid full price. My feet were killing me because of these platform shoes, but I wanted to make my legs look longer, so it really can't be helped, I suppose. I never really think of myself as unique or anything, but while browsing another store, I found basically the same outfit as what I was wearing. There were some cool accessories and piercings, but they weren't really my style. I always considered getting my ears pierced, but it just seems like a hassle to me. Even though I wanted to take these retro TVs home with me, they were sadly just set dressing that wasn't for sale. How sad. I am a creature of habit, so I walked past some claw machines just to browse this time. And as is tradition, I have to get dessert every time in my vlogs, so I picked up a piece of matcha daihuku on my way home. Uh, it's getting late though, and I hate crowds, so I'll see you whenever. Bye.